Hi, this is Dave from Unplugged Woodworking and as promised I'm going to talk about this guy and I'm going to demonstrate the uses of it or at least what I use it for. So some of them I use on a regular basis and some of them are just ideas and concepts but I thought I would show them and maybe you can use them maybe you can't. So I have also had some questions um, just about this curve so the idea the idea with the curve at the front is that before this, before I actually made, like made the thing, I was actually just using a piece of wood, like so. And every now and again, I would actually hit it if I was playing and stuff like that. I even using my chisel, if, if the chisel slipped or the paint, plane slipped, I would actually hit just like a square piece of wood. Um, it often led to, to bleeding and obviously it hurts where if you've got the curve if you're playing and you hit it you've got a little bit of deflection obviously it's got chamfers so typically touch wood i haven't cut myself yet um also with the curve it allows a little bit extra space to get into the piece so that was the idea um, behind the curve when I've made this, I've actually done a boo boo. Um, I don't know, I don't know how I've managed this, but in fact, I don't know how I've, I've managed it. So when when I've planed it, I've actually only planed the edge of this side, and the face of this hasn't been square, so it's leaning out. If anything, when you're making one of these, you want it to be leaning in like so. Only, I'm only talking about maybe a degree, two degrees at the very, very most. And as all this is for is when it's actually in the um, in the notch. If you put multiple pieces in, which I do, um, it actually nips it, so it actually ages. So when you when you've got it in and you push it in, and it nips it into place, it actually leaves you the hand free, uh, your two hands free roller. You know if you want to be um, using them. Um, the peg and wedge system which I'm going to demonstrate to put it into place is it can be a little bit fiddly so I am only going to be putting this in yeah this is going to be a thickness of the of the material that I'm going to be putting in for the first demonstration so what I normally do is I'll tend to put it in like this And that's pretty much it it can be a bit fiddly at times it didn't look too bad there but that's how i would normally do that for the first demonstration i'm gonna show you how i would play in a white board like this is a multiple blue air glued up boards when i was doing this there was no need for pegs but all of a such you know just with it being so big and wide it just stayed in the, it just stayed in place you know happy days so as you can see, I've got just some, uh, that's just some MDF, that's just to stop this from getting grass stains on it, that's all it's for, so basically I'm just going to get it, slide it into place, So as you can see, it's you know it's, it ain't going anywhere. You know it's it's pretty it's pretty decent on white panels. You, like I said, you don't need to use any pegs. So what about just boards in general? I mean, just let's just see we had to um, play on the top of this some engraving plane, and so you'll notice yeah, these um, holes. I've just been adding these as I need them. Um, this is another one I do use. Um, another technique I have been using so with this I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add a peg in and a wedge so as you can see the wedge is obviously too big so scrap piece of wood works totally fine so if we want it to be off the ground we want it to be a different height and just put it there and that's fixed into position now 
something to add to this is that if you need more support more up here obviously this accommodates it so what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna put a little chamfer on the end of here so I don't burst out As you can see, it's you know it's pretty. It ain't going anywhere. Um, I haven't really tried sawing, um, doing dovetails and such as we. That's just because of the nature of the the orientation of this. Obviously, the bench is on its width this way, so when you when you're actually cutting this way, it is more prone to rock. If you if you wanted to cut those tails, you possibly could. So that is pretty possible. So again, what about even narrower pieces? With a narrower piece, you typically you could have it in like so, and just with the pegs in place to keep it in place. So something to note here is that this is only 21 mil uh, thick and because so I think it allows the pegs to twist more if this was a thicker material maybe um, you know 20 or 30 millimeters I think it would uh, behave a lot better having said that you know it will hold it in place I've actually lifted this up so you do actually want to have as much support as possible it's only got one wedge in at the moment I'm going to demonstrate it cutting this way this isn't great <clears throat> for the obvious reason that the bottom can come out with me using the Japanese pull saw um, it kind of should be all right something else to note is that same again because because of the orientation of the way I'm cutting, which is with ways across the bench, the bench can rock depending on the weight of it. So, as as you can see, it's it's starting it's starting to come out already. So, obviously. There's mate, there's ways and means around this, obviously. So, is what I would do. I would actually just use a spacer in here um, and just clamp it up the same way as what I clamped this, this bigger board up here. So another concept or idea, if you like, um, I literally come up with this about two days ago. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to experiment, but it is kind of working. It has got some kinks. Um, this is probably more for all the people that have asked us whether they should put a whether they should put a vice on this or not, to which I normally always say don't put a vice on your own workbench, just my preference of course. But uh this might be of some use to the people that want some sort of a vice. Yeah, as as I say, this is just a concept and idea. Um there's lots of things to iron out. I may do an update in the future if I pursue it, which I don't know whether I will. 
So, this is it. So this is just, it's it's basically just a levy arm. It's got some um, crubber on the end of it. Before I put the crubber on it, it didn't seem to work too well, but now that I've put the rubber on it, it seems to be kind of working, if you will. So what we do, we'll put the piece in, like so, and we literally push down. To release it, pull it up, and that's that. As I said, it's very primitive, very crude at the moment, but it was just an idea, and I thought I would share it. Something else I've just used this for quite recently was when I cut these joints. Now, I've already cut the joints, so I can really demonstrate it, but that's how it would work as. We've got the two pegs like so and we just literally wedge them into place i mean it, you don't really need to, to hit these down it's quite secure i mean as you saw and you may have to but um, when i was doing it I didn't have to do it so you know it's pretty good in that respect so what would happen if something like this to cut so as you can see I would get some sort of a wedge in this way but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to wedge it that way as you can see like so This is another idea that I've had. Um, I haven't really had the opportunity to do this, uh, to use it rather. This is um, kind of a makeshift moxing vice if you like. Um, so as you've just seen, I've just secured it with one peg um, and one hold fast. Um, I if you're gonna do this setup, I would recommend a steel hold fast rather than one of the, the wooden hold fast that I've shown in previous videos. Um, you know the the wooden hold fast the will hold the work but you're not going to beat the holding power of the, of the metal hold fast basically so as I said I definitely recommend using a steel one if you're going to do this sort of setup alternatively you could just clamp it into place so I'm just going to cut a couple of dovetails just to demonstrate say uh, show you how well or how well it doesn't um, hold um, it is kind of decent I'm I'm not going to say it's perfect but you know it will allow you to cut dovetails in this fashion as well what i like about this is you're cutting length foyers with the bench and obviously that gives a lot of um, support so rather than cutting it with wood foyers where you will get some rocking length foyers you won't get any rocking from the bench You may 
have need to butt up against this um, for whatever reason maybe you're going to do some cutting some planing so you can actually lock this into position fix um, the board this way as well I mean same again to be honest with you if I'm doing any sort of edge planing I would I would use the um, the dogs that's obviously the the dogs is what sold this to me not the dogs the pegs sorry the pegs sold this to me and that's you know that's why I started using this when you sold it there may be some reason and um, perhaps you are using a softwood um, as I've stated in other videos, if you're using the pegs on something like spruce or, or some or some redwood, it, the pegs will actually leave an indentation if they're wedged up too much or, or there's too much movement. So if you're using a delicate wood and you're edge planing or doing something on the edge of it, that might be something you might want to look at. might have need to do something like this I don't know so I just thought I'd uh, put it out there and um, that's it for today um, leave some comments let us know what you uh, think and if you like the video give us a thumbs up 